Hello everyone and welcome to Arthritis at Home. My name is Ellen and I'm the program's coordinator. Today, we are joined by Dr. Roshan Becker, an assistant professor at the Institute of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Toronto and affiliate scientist at the Kite Research Institute with the University Health Network. More recently, uh, Tina and her team were really successful in obtaining the Ignite Innovation Grant from the Arthritis Society. Huge thanks to the Arthritis Society for their project titled Buggy for Rehab an automated telerehabilitation platform for patients with arthritis and musculoskeletal problems. A very timely project I'm very excited to learn more about. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Roshan Becker. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. So would you start off by telling us how you're involved in, I guess, this project and how it kind of, you know, touches on the field of rheumatology, because you yourself are not a rheumatologist, but really a critical individual in terms of bringing this platform in, you know, from your biomedical engineering perspective to, to the public. For sure. Um, actually, at Kite, um, my main research focus is to use applied artificial intelligence to provide smart solutions to make life easier and hopefully more convenient for the patients and the seniors and their caregivers and family members. So to reach this point, uh, I'm contributing to three different uh, programs here at Kite. Uh, the first one is the food fair testing program, where the main goal of that is to um, increase, decrease the incidence of falls and slips on icy surfaces. And the second program uh, is called PATH, which is a program to accelerate technologies for home care. And uh, this is a nationwide program where we are collaborating with different universities in Canada. So the main goal of this program is to increase the independence among the uh, seniors and the patients to let them to stay in their home, to age well in their home. And it's kind of a monitoring system uh, in this program that we're working on. And the third program is about um, infection control and prevention, um, where we are quantifying the risk of infection for the patient and for the healthcare workers, as well as uh, the seniors in the long-term care and in the hospital environment. So uh, my second program, which I talk about PATH, uh, it's a program where we are defining different project themes. And one of the project themes is the telerehabilitation. Uh -huh. So this is where I come to, the, to, uh, to this type of project. Uh, and um, the first population that we are looking for and to, to use this type of platform, our telerehab platform, as you mentioned, Body for Rehab, which is supposed to be body for the patients, is uh, the patients with uh, shoulder arthritis. So interesting, especially the fact that, you know, we obviously know arthritis occurs in many different joints, it's especially, you know, between osteo and inflammatory uh, arthritis types, but shoulder being a very specific area that I don't think, like ankle and shoulder, are like the two things that I like, I don't feel like there's enough attention on and the fact that you're really filling this need and then with your expertise as somebody who focuses on artificial intelligence and how, you know, you are now find your expertise in the field of rheumatology. We're so grateful to have you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, at Kite, we are working on very multidisciplinary teams. Yes. You can say we have engineers, we have computer science, and we have biomedical engineers, we have um, physiotherapists, clinicians, pain specialists. So we are all working together. And that's why uh, we come up with this type of um, patients first, because the, the doctors and the clinicians told us that there are a lot of people that are, um, are, are coming in outpatients and they are they have this problem and this platform would be really helpful for them and it's so true that when we are faced with these real life problems um, our solution previously was one person was leading a team um, of like-minded individuals and hopefully we fix it when we figured out that doesn't work you need these like as you said these multidisciplinary teams with people with different expertise from different fields coming together and you, you know, you learn from each other. So 
uh, all of the engineers have learned from the clinicians that having the patient voice is really important. Exactly. Yeah. But yourself having your expertise in using technology and actually making the tele-rehabilitation possible, right? That beautiful blend of, of uh, technology and medicine coming together. Yeah, is is wonderful and exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask what is quote unquote tele-rehabilitation? I know it goes by about 17 other names. <laughs> and um, how do you uh, see it kind of filling a need in, in, in care? Yeah, you know, um, just to start with defining what is tele-rehabilitation uh, simply. So tele-rehabilitation is a form of rehabilitation which uses uh, the communication protocols in order to facilitate the connection between the clinicians and the patients. And uh, the tele-rehab platforms are provided in different forms. And most of them, the target uh, task of them is to do the monitoring, to do the assessment, and also for the treatment. So, you know, the current tele-rehab platform mostly are using like a video conferencing or web conferencing, like, for example, uh, Zoom meetings or Teams meeting, where we still need the clinician to uh, be available to visit the patients and ask them to perform some exercises to do the assessment and also to provide the patients with a list of exercises, for example, to perform them in daily basis, and then uh, to visit them again uh, after a while. So, uh, you know, this type of tele-rehab platform, albeit it is useful, but uh, there is uh, no uh, supervision on, the, on performing the exercises. So in my team, we are trying to make this more automated. So uh, we are using, uh, we are going to use artificial intelligence in order to provide the patients with feedback uh, if they perform the exercise in correct way or in in correct way. And if they perform in incorrect way, how they need to refine their movements in order to reach to the correct patterns and to get the most out of their plan of care. So um, right now we are, I mean, starting with uh, providing feedback and guidance of correct and incorrect. And furthermore, by, by collecting data from real patients, we need a lot of um, patients to collect the data from them and to train our models because artificial intelligent models should be trained based on the data from the patients, actual patients. And from there, we are able to validate our models and see if they are really working accurately and they're providing right feedback at the right time and right recommendations on, on, on that type of movements. So this is what we are really trying to do in this platform. So, you know, because it's very important that the patients perform the exercises which are prescribed for them correctly, because otherwise they may ruin the other parts of the body, or even they may uh, have more pain if they are doing that incorrectly. So this is very important. And this is a part of treatment that we are including in this platform. The other part is the assessment. So uh, by the platform that we are designing, we are using a depth camera in front of the patient. And this camera can capture different information such as the body joints and acceleration and velocity. So uh, we, are, um, we are providing the clinicians with a report of the joint um, acceleration and velocity, the range of motions, and this can be helpful for them to perform the assessment uh, reliably, uh, I mean, in a virtual environment. You know, I like cannot even imagine how how big of an impact this is going to have because we know there's not enough physical therapists, right? But at the same time, we know that exercise is medicine, but it's not being uptaken because we've all had that experience of we go to the gym, we start, we saw fancy exercise, we tried to do it, and we were out for like a month because we hurt ourselves and doing rehabilitation exercises properly is so critical, but who has time to drive to a physio to make an appointment with a physio who has the resources to, to see a physio like, you know, every single week, but this platform would allow, as you said, the recognition of the correct movement pattern and then exactly. providing an individual with feedback. And for everyone listening, when we say we train a, a AI model, uh, it's telling it's telling um, this this you know 
um, uh, uh, model that we're training. You know, this is correct. This is incorrect. Look for the yeah. correct ones and then give us a green tick box. Look for the incorrect ones and give us a big red X. That's, yes. Yeah. So you're, you're teaching it with the data and the information. So I know. Exactly. Well, wow. What, what, what exciting, exciting work. Um, can I ask, you know, for my own curiosity, um, are there kind of like little markers that you put? Like, does it just, does it just see the person? Um, like, how does it know I'm doing an exercise correctly or incorrectly? <laughs> so, you know, there are different methods in general. So some of them are based on markers, uh, which uses, uh, I mean, different types of um, cameras, like motion capture systems. And some of them use wearables, like IMU, inertial measurement units, that is very common to use right now uh, on different parts of the body. But, you know, uh, for the design of the body for rehab, we were avoiding any type of wearables. Uh, we want to, uh, because, you know, the target population also uh, includes uh, the seniors who um, may not be able to perform, uh, I mean, to attach the markers or the IMUs or whatever is wearables on their body correctly. And they would like to, they, they don't like to really wear uh, devices. So that's why we, we are just getting this information from a depth camera. We have uh, three different uh, dimensions and the position of each joint um, is recognized by again using AI technologies. And we are getting this uh, positions and the velocity and the acceleration of each body joints. So from there, we are able to, to use this information for those purposes. So nothing will be connected to the body. They just, you know, we are trying to make the system really simple with zero effort. And we just need the patient to put the camera in front of them and just perform the exercises. That's it. Wow. I see. I, I thought it was going to be some motion capture system, but to know that, you know, technology has advanced to a place where yeah. the camera, it knows where your shoulders are and we're good. <laughs> uh, is is truly incredible. And um, I'm going to throw one more question at you, uh, again, from a perspective of like as a consumer, a, nor a normal consumer, whether you have arthritis or not, maybe you're just new to working out in general and you just want the feedback, but it's really impractical to look, to find a physical therapist in your area, or perhaps um, you haven't connected with any personal trainer that you've met. Do you think this connect, this technology actually could be accessible to all consumers one day for a reasonable price? Like, can we all have one of these cool cameras in our home one day? That, that's a very great question. You know, um, the main po point of having telerehabilitation is also to help the patients who are uh, far from the clinics and rehab centers and they are living in rural areas and even we are thinking of targeting patients uh, like indigenous population who are uh, far away from the clinics and they are able to come to the clinics but not for example every week once in a while so the system will not replace really in-person visits but will help in the meantime, will help them to perform the exercises correctly. And also we want to have a capability in the system to be able to even connect to the clinicians if they really need to do that. So this is not going to replace for sure the in-person visits, but they, this is kind of an assisting um, technology, right? So we are targeting for sure the, the population who are far away from the clinics and rehab centers are and the, uh, one of our main uh, um, population uh, that we are also uh, help working to help them to use this system. Those next steps are already there. Yeah. You can tell that you are thinking ahead. And as you said, that, you know, using technology, I think we, we some of us fear like, oh, is it going to replace the human? It's, it's never going to replace the human. But no. what you know is that yeah. appearance is an issue, right? Like it is really hard want to do your exercises sometimes but if you know that number one you can do it safely because this technology will give you feedback right and if right. you know that you can reach your healthcare provider in this case physical therapist via the system i think that's so encouraging and that could really help with the, the adherence issue um, as well as the accessibility issue so exactly Cannot wait to see where this project takes you. And, um, you know, Dr. Roshan uh, Fekker, I'm just very, very grateful for your time and sharing your, your engineering expertise with us, which we don't usually get on the show. So thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is great. Thanks. Absolutely. And with that, with everyone, we will share some resources in the link below, um, as well as some cool reading that you guys can check out to learn more about this project and other projects from the Kite Institute. So with that, thank you so much. And we will see everyone on the next episode of Arthritis at Home. Goodbye for now. Thank you.